with my five finger foam brush piece of fabric complete it's now time to add the salt to create salt mountains with this technique by putting on quite high mountains and then putting them far enough apart the salt is very very busy pulling all the colour to it and if you put them far enough apart in between the mountains you get lovely strength of colour this piece of fabric should end up like looking something like the sea we hope you never know quite what you're going to get when you're working with salt though because working with salt is at best random it'll do its thing and it's always brilliant so my mountains are around about 8 to 10 centimeters apart what's under the salt will give lovely markings of that particular size of salt and what's in between the mountains will give the strong um, color pulling effect that you can see in the sample pieces a few bits of salt off the mountains actually give some interesting markings between but you don't want too much off there otherwise it does spoil the effect of what you're trying to do I just love desalting the salt mountains we're going to actually pull all the salt into the middle of the fabric no matter what the size of the fabric and now we can see that beautiful pattern where all the salt has been sitting when you've been working with salt mountains there's been a lot of salt there and a lot of salt pulling the color to it you may get with all that saltiness a little bit of color loose color sitting around the salt so don't be concerned if you get a little bit of color coming out into your water during this process that's quite normal provided your fabric has been totally dry before you take the salt off so with our fabric still wet and laying flat on the board we're going to put on our appropriate salt depending on the size markings you want with our mountains about 8 to 10 centimeters apart and between 1 and 2 centimeters high to give the salt plenty of pulling power it is really important then to leave that flat on the fabric until it is totally dry before you remove the salt let's have a look at some yummy patterns when you look at the back of some of these fabrics it's just as exciting as the front and really there's no such thing as right side or wrong side it's the side you like best and now look what happens when you do little salt hills instead of salt mountains you get scones One of my real favourite things to do is a topic I'm going to call controlled salting. But salting is one of those things where you know, the technique is at best random. So we're going to try and control ourselves this time by getting our colours on here in a very organised way. To do this technique, I really need to work on a frame or a hoop or something where the work is actually suspended quite tightly. I've uh, just got a plastic flexi hoop here. I'm now going to give that a bit of a stretch. Now that I've got the fabric secured in, in, the, in the hoop. The fabric is wet. Now there are two ways you can go about it. I've pre-wet mine and that usually works fairly well. But if you want to be really pedantic about it, you can stretch up your fabric first and then wet it with a foam brush and that is probably a little bit more even we are going to work with a real foam brush for this one and um, the foam brushes 
out there in the marketplace are many and varied. What you're actually looking for is a foam that is nice and firm and a brush that has a little membrane that goes quite close to the end. Some foams are really, really soft. It's a good idea to leave those for somebody else who's going to do other things with them. So just feel through your packaging and make sure you're getting a nice firm foam. There are a couple of my favourites. Okay, the colours. We're going to prepare our colours into a palette and I'm simply going to put in what I need. This is a technique where it's really good if your colours do go nicely together. And I like to use the craft paper test just to check them out. Just some white paper, a dab of each colour. And yes, I can see that they work. If I, however, thought, oh, maybe that one's a bit dark, I can add some water to it and think, hmm, wonder if this works better. Yes, that hasn't quite got the dominance that the other one had. It also is a great way of checking to see if other colours might fit in there so that you can rule them in or out according to what your project requires. I love my craft paper test. Okay, I'm going to work with red, orange and Genesis purple. Genesis purple being a mixture of red and purple. To prepare my brush, I'm going to dip it in water, dry it in a towel. Sounds a bit crazy, but that just prepares the brush for applying the colour. I'm then going to pick up the colours on my brush and apply them to the fabric. Now you will find as you're doing this that that fabric becomes very, very heavy. If you're working on a silk frame or something that's a bit higher, that's okay. But these little hoops are quite narrow, so I'm going to pop a second one under there just to give myself a bit of elevation so that when I'm applying my colours, it's not sitting against, they're not sitting against the plastic. I'm going to apply these colours as evenly as I can. I'm not going to um, wash the brushes in between colours. I'm going to use the same brush all the way through. And the colours are blending anyway. So just working in concentric circles. I'm applying those colours as evenly as I can to the fabric. Let's just blend that through a bit more. Just remember that the colours are all non-toxic, so it's quite safe to put my finger in them. And let's add our third colour to that. So now we've completed our colouring, um, it's time to do something to this to try to control our salting. The thing we do is we put on a weight, a weight of some sort that will help pull the fabric down. I've just got a wonderful little spring form pan thing here. And if I take the pan out, can you see that will draw the um, fabric down and then it will make the colour do exciting things. We'll talk about a few different alternatives in a moment. On then goes the salt. I'll show you how to work inside and outside the circle. Get my salt loose. It's important now, because we're controlling things, that we put in our salt as evenly as possible onto our fabric. So if I'm putting it on lightly in one area, I really need to go fairly lightly all the way around. Or if it gets too heavy, you just have to make it heavy. 
all the way around. Okay, then we can work either inside or outside as required or as desired. If I'm going to work inside, I'll put a little bit of salt in there now. And then to add extra colour, I can do that by simply dropping it in onto the salt. Watching it work, work is about as exciting as watching your kettle boil. So on this fellow here, we're going to see patterning happening like the one in front of me as that salt dries. I can add a little bit of salt around the edges too. Let's do that. Or you needn't if you don't want to. The sort of things that I could use if I didn't have a spring form pan. Anything that washes, because anything that you work with salt needs to be washed to get the saltiness off it. I could get different results by using a tumbler, for example, by putting it that way, lip down, I would get enough air inside there to create the pattern. If, however, I put it base side down, I may even get the pattern from the base of that tumbler, but with air exclusion it would be a bit crazy to put a bit of salt in there. However, sometimes you need a plain bottom, and if you want a plain bottom, that's what you get, either with a coffee mug or a cereal bowl or something. And again, whether you put it base down or base up will give you different designs. You will find when you're hunting around out there all sorts of exciting little things that you can use as weights. Horseshoes. I've got a fun one here called a horse brass. Now, I don't know too much about horses, but I know they decorate themselves up from time to time. And by putting that little horse brass on there, I'll get a different pattern. Again, it's acting as a weight to make the salt become controlled um, around it. And you could put salt over it if you wanted. And this one's cute enough to even create a little vase of flowers or something. So I'm sure you'll find all sorts of things that you can use to make a weight to weigh that down to create the pattern. Liquid radiance is non-toxic. Doesn't matter if you pull things out of your kitchen cupboard, they will clean up, there will be no harm to your health whatsoever. And now the fun part is we wait. Controlled salting. Can we really control salt? Well, no, it's got a mind of its own. But in this process, we think we've conquered how we can make it do some fairly interesting things. We're going to choose something over which to suspend our fabric. An embroidery hoop, even an old cake tin, even an ice cream container. The squarish edges don't matter, really. We're going to wet our fabric, we're going to hold it onto the chosen thing and then apply our colours evenly with a real foam brush. That's the simplest way to do it. When the colours are on, we'll put a weight on, something heavy to give an angle to the fabric so that when we put the salt on, the salt also draws the colour at that angle. We let it dry. We take the salt off and we rinse it really, really well. We certainly don't want to be putting salty fabrics through a sewing machine. And then when it's all desalted and dry, we're going to heat set it. When you see the photos, you'll see that sometimes the salt has seemed to work from the inside of the design area to the outside. In other places, it's worked from the outside in. Do we have any control over that? No, not really. It's salt doing its thing, but where we have control is in putting that weight there so it does what we want it to do. It's beautiful. Don't you agree?